Signals are perfect for synchronous reactivity, and observables are perfect for asynchronous reactivity. They are complementary to each other, but they're also at odds with each other. In this video, I'm going to explain a trick I figured out to get them to play really well with each other. I call it the auto signal pattern. The problem with using signals and observables together is that two signal subscribes immediately, and it stays subscribed until the signal is destroyed. And the reason it does this is because signals are expected to always contain a value that can be read from at any time. But this is a problem for RxJS because it blocks the ability of RxJS to automatically uh, clean up, reset and refetch, cancel requests, and defer work and requests. Listening to data sources can be expensive. Firebase has different pricing levels depending on the number of sim simultaneous connections, and other sources can have memory leaks if they're not cleaned up properly. Apps that don't use RxJS effectively will have to manually write cleanup code, which can easily be neglected in some scenarios. If you need an event source on only some pages, um, observables can automatically clean up the connections or listeners when the user goes to other pages and all subscribers have unsubscribed. But if you call to signal in a shared service, the source observable will never clean up resources. When you leave a page and then you come back, seeing old data there can be jarring. If you don't use ArcGIS effectively, you're going to have to add imperative code to handle clearing old state and logic for it too. So uh, that's one thing. You're also going to have to add code, imperative code, to refetch data when they come back. So inside and on an it, you're going to have to do that. But ArcGIS could just do this for you automatically. When you have subscribers to an ArcGIS observable and then they unsubscribe, ArcGIS can reset that data automatically. And then when they resubscribe, it can refetch the data so you have fresh data when you want it. And no manual imperative code is required. But if you call to signal in a shared service, the source observable will never reset its state or refetch data. When you leave a page, it becomes pointless and wasteful to continue fetching unnecessary data or creating expensive data sources. Without RxJS, it's up to developers to notice when certain data sources are large enough or when a user connection might be slow enough that it noticeably would deteriorate the user experience. Observables can automatically handle canceling requests when the user goes to other pages and all subscribers have unsubscribed. But if you call to signal in a shared service, the source observable will continue on with unnecessary requests and download unnecessary data. It's usually pointless and wasteful to fetch data or create expensive connections before they're necessary. Observables can represent data sources, but wait for subscribers instead of prematurely consuming them. But if you call to signal in a shared service, the source observable will be subscribed to immediately and the data source it represents will be consumed immediately. So should we just not share signals then? If you want to share a synchronously derived state, either you can't use signals or you have to sacrifice automatic cleanup, resetting, refetching, cancellation, and deferment. The more compl complex your application is, the more painful this trade-off is going to be. This is why, despite the huge benefits of using signals for synchronously derived state, uh, I've advised to never use signals in a shared service. It sucks not to have efficient derived state, but it usually sucks more to have lower code quality because ArcGIS can't automatically manage data dependencies. And just as a side note, I'm not really asking for anything excessively luxurious here. These benefits are commonly achieved in React with hooks like use query. I believe Angular can have nice things too if people want them, but we need something that integrates uh, m better with Angular than React Query. And I think it's RxJS. And these benefits are actually useful in the real world. Once I worked for a company that had two or three routes using real-time data, but the user spent the majority of the time away from those routes, so it was important to close unused connections. The most complex feature 
required this series of asynchronous data dependencies. First, get the Firebase token from the server, and then create a Firebase connection, and then fetch messages from the Firebase uh, endpoint, I forget what you call them. Um, and then and then you fetch, we had to fetch more, more details from the server based on the data in the messages. So this isn't perfect architecture, but I had no power over this. And the, the design was changing a lot, so it was very dynamic, dynamic. It was very important to avoid a lot of imperative manual management of the Firebase connection. Instead, we set it up with ArcGIS so that if if nothing was listening to any data that derived from the Firebase connection, ultimately, then the Firebase connection was closed. It happened automatically. We never worried about orchestrating when sibling routes might need the Firebase connection or not. We just had a service provided in root, and the Firebase connection automatically closed when they were not needed by any component, and then automatically opened when they were needed. Real-time data is awesome for users, and RxJS makes it easy for developers. Once you get used to automatic cleanup, resetting, refetching, cancellation, and deferment, you'll never want to code any other way, even in simple apps. It's just too convenient to not, to not have to use imperative duct tape everywhere. Here's the pattern I recommend. I'm calling it the auto signal pattern. Rather than converting an observable to a signal with to signal, we can keep the observables and signals separate, but build a connection between them that lasts exactly as long as we need it. So let's say we have a uh, an observable, an interval, and we have some derived state that we want to derive from it. So count and double. So what we would like to do is create a function that that creates a connection between interval and count, and then we can represent that connection as an observable. So here's that function, and it's returning a, an observable. Um, when we subscribe to that observable, it will subscribe to interval. And when interval emits, uh, we want to call count uh, dot set and pass it the state we want to we want to set the signal to the state that came from the observable okay but it should only do this once no matter how many subscribers it has so we're going to add a share at the end of that all right and also when all the subscribers are done we're going to want to um, reset it back to initial state but there's actually a trick here because sometimes a source can self-complete and that will trigger the finalize to run we don't want that to happen uh, when the source completes, we want it to happen when all the subscribers unsubscribe uh, from you know the ones that are using this downstream. We want that to trigger the finalize, the reset to initial state, not when the source completes. So there's a trick. What we have to do is we have to merge the source with a never observable. That just means that from from the source side of things, the stream will never complete and it will never reset back to initial state. All the subscribers have to unsubscribe for it to reset. And here's how to use it. So we have our three things that we already defined, count, double, and interval. And then we define a new observable called connection. And we call our function. We pass in the signal that we want uh, to uh, have the results of interval. OK, now if we subscribe to connection, it will, it will create that connection. Now we can create a function that does this automatically when we inject the service. We can call it inject auto signal and we will uh, inject the service and then we'll look for a connection property on that service and immediately subscribe to it and have it subscribe until on destroy gets called. And here's how we can use that function. We just call inject auto signal and pass in that service that has the signal and it, it will automatically subscribe and we get we get derived state with signals but also automatic cleanup resetting refetching and cancellation the one thing that's missing is automatic deferment and the reason is because our observable is is going to be subscribed to as soon as the service first gets created 
that service isn't going to going to get created even if it's provided in root until we inject it in the serve in the component however uh, that's also when it subscribes. So if there's like an ngif in the template and you're expecting uh, like the observable to not be subscribed to until that it renders the part where it's used in the template, it doesn't do like template level laziness or deferment. It it just subscribes as soon as a component is using it. But this is actually good enough for the vast majority of use cases. Now, if we want to use this derived state in another service, we just have to make sure to copy the connection observable to a brand new connection property on the new service. And we have to make sure that we don't we don't inject auto signal here because that would subscribe and that would defeat the purpose of this. We'd be back to the behavior of two signal. We just want to inject it like normal and pass on the connection property. And this will this will extend the auto signal pattern to this new service. And uh, you can also combine two of these services, uh, these auto signals, and this is how you can do that. Uh, so if you have two services, you can just inject them like normal. Um, and here's, here's a combined derived state. And what you do is you just define a new connection observable that merges the connection observables from these other services. And then you can also add if you wanted to another uh, auto signal here and uh, add the connection here too by by calling uh, the the connect the connect uh, source function so yeah this is a really powerful pattern it really is it really is extensible so it looks like we got everything we wanted we got the best of both worlds efficient synchronous reactivity with signals and on demand asynchronous reactivity from rxjs Hopefully this helps the Angular community write cleaner and safer code, uh, but please share this article with other developers so we can help spread this pattern. And thanks for watching.